Welcome to the Scale Builders Guild. Here we are. It's uh, Sunday. We're doing a live build today. We're doing the beginnings of the Fun Haver. And uh, hopefully you saw the thumbnail and you know what that is. Um, we're going to be building off the Element Gatekeeper Kit. This is the Owner's Build Manual. And... Uh, Hopefully everybody can hear me just fine. Let me know where you're watching from. Uh, I wanted to do a stream on the weekend um, that is a little more uh, European friendly for all of my friends on the other side of the ocean. Uh, this time zone thing is, you know, something that we have to deal with. Ooh, look, I can crush my own head. Crush, 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 crush. It would be better if my hand were over that, but whatever. Um, Norway checking in. Awesome. That's great. Illinois. That's, uh, oh, Goodwood is on. Yeah, that's true. Um, eh, Calgary, tiny me. Yep. Here I am. Uh, South Africa. Awesome. So my plan worked. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Uh, Artful Dodgers is here. We're going to be using a ton of Artful Dodgers parts today. He's an eBay bestseller, by the way. Uh, because he makes a bunch of parts for the Element Enduro and the IFS uh, kit for the Enduro, we're going to toss a ton of his parts on here. Um, some things may make it, some things may not. It all depends on the uh, on the build and how far we get today. Uh, but there's a lot of really great stuff from Artful Dodgers specifically for the Enduro line. And uh, because uh, Element shares so many pieces between all of its models, it's really easy for one thing to go on the other. And so the, the, the goal here is to make um, Lauren Healy's Fun Haver. It's a Bronco based, it's from Triton Engineering. Uh, it's independent front suspension. So obviously we're gonna be using the IFS kit uh, from Element to make all of this happen. Uh, some of these parts will get swapped out. Of course, the shocks are one of the first things that's gonna go because uh, the gold shocks are in the gatekeeper kit. Um, don't look here. <laughs> Don't look at this part. Um, <laughs> I uh, when I was building this IFS kit, it was originally going in the um, what was it? The uh, uh, extra cab SR5 build, and I was you know reworking it, making the servo work with the the smaller motor and uh, different uh, GCM transfer case and transmission and everything. Um, but yes, uh, the idea is to use this in conjunction with the gatekeeper kit so it's kind of it's going to kind of be all over the place today there's going to be bits and pieces um from the, the actual kit that we're going to start with but then there's a bunch of stuff that we're going to skip because it's not relevant to ifs and i haven't done my due diligence and actually gone through the manual to see if they actually show uh how to install the ifs on here which it doesn't look like they did that's okay it's already built so it should just be like swapping it out, putting it on. Uh, sorry if I'm a bit clammy. I just finished a spin class uh, and I wanted to, because I got to get my workouts in, man. <laughs> that's exactly, I know, Travis, that's exactly how you get people to not to look at something you don't want them to look at. Don't look over here. That's the art of direction <laughs> instead of the art of misdirection. Um, for a power plant... Um, I'm going to be using, and I probably should have started there, uh, but I'm going to be using the Spectrum Firma uh, brushless censored ESC and motor combo. This is the 2100 KV. Ugh. So many lights. 2100 KV. And um, this, is a, this is a great system. I really like the smart tech stuff. I've been using it in a lot of my trucks. So it just kind of made sense to continue on with that. It's also a tiny bit warm in here today. Usually my basement workshop is nice and cool, but not today. Uh, part of the benefit of the gatekeeper kit over the RTR, which I've already reviewed on this channel, uh, you get a lot of the gray plastics, which are sort of the factory team plastic. And uh, there's an example of the gray plastic there. 
Here's an example of the black plastic. <laughs> so you can see the difference. Um, one of them has a little more uh, rigidity, but also flexibility. So it's sort of like a twofer. Uh, and the gray plastic is that you get a little more. Morning, RC Patina guy. See, I'm even getting some of the uh, United States West Coaster people. So that's great. Thank you very much for checking it. Um, yeah. So uh, where to begin? Uh, I guess at the beginning. One of the things that I think we're going to have to look at is whether or not uh, these um, front uh, shock towers are going to work. But, uh, you know, uh, we'll, get, we'll get to that point. I think they probably won't. Maybe they will. It's all about making sure that the uh, length of the shock travel is the same. But I think because of the way the IFS system works, you're going to have to use the IFS uh, things so maybe uh when we get to that we'll get to that all right let's start at the beginning step one and by the way you know i i'm i'm here all day so if you've got questions or you want to try stuff uh if you you want to see something in 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 uh in sort of like a little more detail let me know i've never built uh the gatekeeper but having one certainly probably helps all right uh, most of you already know that the element line uh, they made it so you could use a standard three gear transmission if you if you preferred uh, the skid is basically the same design so you can just plop your axial based three gear or vanquish based three gear whatever you whatever you had you could do that they do offer that flexibility which is pretty cool pretty pretty cool all right so uh rail and we're working on the driver's side first it looks like uh already i noticed there's the step for the pan hard here we're not going to need to do the pan hard um because obviously why independent front suspension all right uh because i am trying to uh oh man i am very sweaty sorry <laughs> uh maybe i should drink some more hot coffee that's probably a good idea um, all right, let's get started. Will you be using overdrive? Yes, uh, it comes with overdrive as a standard option. So that's definitely something we'll be doing. Uh, where are my bags of screws? There we go. I feel so like feel out of it. I haven't built a kit in a little while. I'll figure it out. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> or do I? Shock towers will work, but you'll need the drop mounts for the shocks. Okay, well, great. I have those. Excellent. Uh, Quack RC, thanks for the five bucks. Hey man, the, this build looks fun. Yes, it does look fun. Uh, what do I think of the gatekeeper? Uh, I would probably, if I had my druthers, which I do, <laughs> I would choose the kit over the RTR. That's just my preference. Uh, there's enough upgrades in the kit and I prefer building. So that's where I would go. Uh, okay. Where are we going to start? Let's start front. I do like these gray plastics. Um, they do offer a lot more rigidity. Six mil. No build would be able to be built without my trusty DeWalt. Uh, this eight volt max gyro driver is the best. Big red bitch, how you doing? Vidjo, hello. When you uh, set forward to read, we get a real good look at that forehead. Yes, that's good. <laughs> that was the intention. The chassis rails are uh, not aluminum. They're steel, stamped steel. Um, and they're not, they're definitely not plastic. Uh, 
There you are. So far, so good. Nothing broken. Have another hot pepper. Oh, I gave away all the Armageddon to people who thought they wanted it. Those fools. Fools! It was very hot. Forehead tattoo? <laughs> I think no. I think we'll, uh, I think we'll not end up doing that. I'm not much of, like, a tattoos exposed kind of guy. I don't know if it's, like, I don't have anything against it. It's just not for me. Just get a few face tattoos. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are so into the idea. Despite me having zero interest in it. Ten and ten, baby. If you if you do, I'll think about it. <laughs> well, it's compelling. But I'm gonna pass. All right, now, before we get too far, we have to put on our uh, trailing arm mount, which there are two of. One for the left and one for the right. What other hobbies do I have? Well, Simon, I really enjoy building PCs now. That sort of came out of nowhere. Uh, but I thoroughly enjoy that. It's super, super, super fun. Uh, oh, this keys in nicely. They made this part so it's got a little um, indentation in there. So when you put it in there, it just keys right in. Brilliant. Brilliant. A couple of 16 mils for that. Tribal sideburns. Oh, my God. I've been out of the tattoo game for a little while. I haven't gotten anything new in some time. But I probably will. I don't, I'm not, it's not done. Could fit a nice Vanquish logo on that forehead. Oh, God. Can you imagine, like, what's the worst... RC related tattoo you think you could get what would the worst one be Lad Ridge RC my gatekeeper has SCX 10 two axles and the front axle pinion and rear gear is meshed incorrectly front axle pinion and ring gear is meshed incorrectly Ah, uh, uh, shim the axle. Uh, put a couple of small um, five mil shims on the actual pinion, and it'll pull it out enough that it'll it'll work. It's as simple as that. Okay, so we can skip the um, what you call it. We don't need the panhard plate. And looks like we've got that whole side done. On to gate two. Let's put on front bumper mount, because that will get used with the IFS. I have to get my snippers out. How many people let these things just go flying? Pew! I'll find that later, when I step on it. <laughs> now, which way is up? Skinnier holes on the top. Now, if I do this first, then I won't be able to get the IFS in. So, here, let's zoom out a little bit here. Oops, wrong way. There we go. That's a little better. Get the name of your favorite WP Atraxis logo eyebrows. Oh my god. SBG logo on the shoulder. Picture of the Lloyd. Traxis. Worst tattoo, Traxis Wraith. 
These are some good ideas. I like it. Uh, hi, side piece. Uh, what's your opinion on the revolver style motors? I heard the Holmes Hobbies. Crawl Master Mini ESC makes them almost scientifically. I think you meant silent. Uh, yes, they do. I have that combo. Uh, just waiting for a comp build to start. Area code across my forehead. What if they change the area codes, though? Okay, so we won't also need to do any of these uh, steering servo mount bits. Um, so let's get these uh, shock towers. You know what? I think it's time to just put the IFS on. <laughs> it's just that easy. There. Was that so hard? No. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Okay, but we do need shock towers and everything, so let's get those on first. Um, now, who was it? Somebody said I could use the drop downs with these, so let's see how that works. If it does, here's me crossing my fingers. I don't. Hmm. I don't think you can because these these ones have a different system for which to mount these. So. I don't think they would be the same because this piece goes in. It's a single piece. So I think you do have to use, I think you have to use this. It's not silent, Mickey says. Okay, well, um, I haven't actually set it up yet, so I can't confirm nor deny. I have a feeling you have to stick with these. Let's, you know what, let's move forward assuming that you do. See how that goes. Uh, 14 millimeter. How many, how many other people out there um, can just look at a, a screw and go, yep, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I needed. I'm almost there. Not always do I get it perfect. But I'm close. No, yes, Mickey, I understood that's what you were getting at there. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I honestly think you need to use this one because the the way the shock mounts it is a lot lower on the chassis than it would be if it were thing you could use our towers now <laughs> right are these are these the towers good point artful dodgers um artful dodgers this looks like it could be them but i don't know how they mount is this the right way is this the right orientation? Uh, I can do also do it. This is the right one. Okay, great. And this is the right orientation. It looks like it is. I see how you did it. Okay, that's cool. I like it. Sweet. Anything to make it a little more rigid. I guess we can't use that 14 millimeter uh, countersunk though. So we have to go to something else. Good thing I have something else right here. I like this already. And look at that. If you were wondering, I guess that includes, if you were using the pan hard, this includes the pan hard mount already on the shock tower mount. Pretty smart. Pretty smart. Hello, Hemi Storm. Always nice to see Chris checking in. And then I guess that means you also don't need to use this um, lowering plate. 
<laughs> Hope everyone's having a great weekend except Connor McGregor. What did he do? Ah, that's really cool. I like that a lot. Actually, that may require another spacer. All right. Anyway, we'll we'll get to that later because I'm not using these shocks anyway. Those are coming off. They're coming off right now. He broke a leg. I don't watch a lot of the um, Ultimate Fighting Champion stuff, so I don't really know much about it. But let's assume that he broke it in a fight. Those shock towers look great, by the way. That's going to make this a lot more tough. All right, what piece am I looking for here? Need to put the rear shock tower on. Those won't, those will still be the old ones. Nothing changes in the rear. He broke it talking smack. Oh, God. I'm pretty clueless when it comes to all things UFC, unfortunately. All right, this goes there and there, I believe. Need the back plate chassis brace, which is there and there, and it goes in first three holes. Uh, I should talk some more. Guess he should have drank more milk. Ugh. We had this discussion on one of the live streams, and Josh was like, you're a weirdo for liking things like almond milk. And it's like, well, I don't know. I like almond milk. Nothing wrong with that. Wait a second. No, that's right. Okay. Where is that? Have you ever ran the shock screw from the other side for a stud mount you can use a nut on? Uh, yeah, I think I've done that on uh, uh, TF2 build. A long time ago. Then this goes here. Thusly. Two and a half by ten. There you are. Yeah, it looks like it gets two of those. Almond milk is definitely better than soy. I could not agree with you more. Soy is gross. Almond and oat are my favorite. I've never tried milking an almond. <laughs> Crawling Finn, I actually don't have any RC-related tattoos at all. Just like when uh, poker was my big hobby. I mean, I still play fairly often. But I wouldn't say it's like my hobby now. Um, never got any tattoos of that either. Chris is just intolerant in general. <laughs> Shock mount rear left. Doesn't call for a screw yet, so we shan't be putting one in. I guess. Okay. There's there's one side so far. Looking pretty good. And we can put the front uh, bumper mount on there now. And that gets to 10 mil ones. You definitely need one RC tattoo. I don't know, man. I, I don't mean to be that guy, but it's just not a good idea. Just like getting a girl's name isn't a good idea. 
you just you just never know you just never know all right i think we can move on to the other side now so let's do that It's just like, there's too many things that can go wrong. What happens if, what happens, yeah, no brands, no people. It's not like, I'm not like the Zune guy, you know? It's not like Zune for life. <laughs> Which, you know, that's, you know, good on him for enjoying the Zune forever. <laughs> it's just not a good idea. 3M tape masks so well it even protects you from COVID. God, I'm not saying that out loud. Get in trouble. <laughs> All right. Start with an 8 mil. You're an 8 mil. Greetings from Estonia. See, my plan to get more European people watching is working. Thank you for checking in, Alar makes me very happy i was hoping that that would be the case is the plastic gray or black and how's the quality compared to Trexis or axial well this is a mixture of gray and black plastic most of the chassis components on the kit are gray so you do get the more rigid plastic uh, it's a lot less flexible um, than the uh, black plastic but from what i recall they don't suggest using the gray plastic in cold climates. And that's because I think it's more prone to snappage uh, than, say, for example, the black plastic. And I think that's just a function of, um, you know, the compound being used. Whether it's better or worse than Axial or Traxxas, it's really hard to say. Like, I don't, I don't beat on this stuff. So I'm not I'm not intentionally difficult on my trucks, um, but uh, I would definitely say that the gray plastic is an improvement over the stock black plastic, without a doubt. Hot coffee. Um, body for this project because if you saw the thumbnail I'm, i am doing a bronco based fun haver so i have a new bright uh <laughs> new bright uh bronco that's going to get chopped all the heck we're going to chop it right down the center section it so it's much narrower we're going to lose the fenders we're going to lose most of the front grille it's not going to be much of a Bronco, but if you've seen Lauren Healy's truck, that's what's going to go on it. So that's how it's going to go. I'm just doing the kit build for today. Uh, most of the modifying of the body uh, will take place at a later date. Uh, but that's going to be a really exciting uh, thing to watch come together. It'll probably be like a what's on the bench sort of thing. You'll see bits and pieces of it go together there. Um, but like when it, when you do all this hard body modifying and stuff, it's really hard to show that live and even in video. I will do my best to give you an idea of how it's all going to come together in video form. But we'll uh, we'll see how far I get with that. I do like those new Artful Dodgers uh, shock towers. Those are pretty, pretty cool. Randy Slosson's still waiting for his Bronco. I think most people are still waiting for their Broncos. I don't think that, um, uh, and it's not Ford's fault so much. I think it's just a supply thing. They just can't get trucks made fast enough. There's like one part that they need that is in really short supply. I guess that's what I remember hearing about anyway. 
And it's just been one of those things where they cannot get enough of them made. It's crazy. I'll, uh, I'll do my best to film elements of the <laughs> elements of the, uh, the construction and modifying. It's, it's tough though. I get like, it's mostly thinking cap stuff. So it's mostly me just sitting there thinking and staring at it. Chipset. That's what it is. Thanks, Jesse. I knew there was something. It's the muffler bearings. They might be out of blinker fluid. I don't know. There's a lot of things that they, uh, they don't have a lot of. <laughs> blinker fluid's definitely one of them. Hopefully everybody can see everything fine. They've been building trucks and then storing them. Yeah, see, that's that's a problem. It's probably why I haven't been able to to uh, or at least one of the reasons that they Apple hasn't put out their new MacBook Pro 16 inch M1 based computers, uh, which is what I'm waiting on. I know that I have PCs now at home, but I still like my Mac laptops. They just they're just better. 16 mils, good. Oops. That's why I like this gyro driver, man. I think the battery's dying. Good thing. I thought about that and charged one up beforehand. Can you drive a MacBook like a semi truck though? No, <laughs> you can't. Uh, it's a lot harder anyway. I mean, Maybe if you use like one of the old trash can models, you could make that into like, that actually wouldn't be a bad looking trailer. Now that I think about it. I considered getting a PC laptop, but I don't think like most of like everybody else in my work is on a, a, a Mac. So it would be sort of weird if I was the only one using a PC laptop. All right, we can change pages. Let's do some electronics mounting. All right, let's do it. So all the parts that I'm not using, I'm going to put in a box and keep, unlike Josh, who just throw all this stuff away willy nilly. I think there's value in hanging on to spare, excuse me, spare parts because uh, you never know when something might break aren't they aren't, aren't people stealing catalytic converters for like isn't there like copper or something in them or something like semi-valuable that can be melted down and sold off nick i'm going overdrive on this chat on this transmission i think and Three. All right, we're also using a bunch of um, Artful Dodgers parts, uh, the IFS front skid plate, which I think we could probably do now, actually. Why not? We've got the IFS on there. Let's see what we need to change or what we've done. There's seven precious metals in catalytic converters. Okay. Uh, great instructions from Artful Dodgers. Great packaging. Everything about Artful Dodgers is really top-notch. Um, and uh, he does such a great job of all of the, the, the uh, graphics and the instruction. It's fantastic. He includes all the parts, too. In my care package, he also included a bunch of uh, really cool um, lab uh, like uh, emblems and stuff. I think that's a Bronco emblem, if I'm not mistaken but there's a bunch of nice stuff in there. Really cool stuff. You're great too. Mm. Thanks, man. Much appreciated. Uh, all right. So uh, I think I already did the first step. 
which will remove some of the bits. Uh, yes, I think we have to add, we have to take some stuff off. Valerian steel. Oh, it kills vampires. Oh, good. Is the plastic they use good plastic similar to Traxxas or Tamiya? Uh, Tamiya plastic is not what I would consider good for our hobby. It's good for hobby stuff. Hobby as in like, you know, on-road cars and, and the vintage stuff and everything. But that plastic is far too snappy to far too rigid this has got a lot more glass fiber and stuff built into it so it has more flexibility uh okay where are those extra parts here so we take off this part hardly designs going to axial fest be entertaining for my drive is nicole with you or are you driving with are you driving with Brandon? I think you might be driving with Brandon. Say hi for me. Say hi to the guy I actually want to say hi to. <laughs> oh man. Wait a second. Oh, this goes huh? Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Read read all the steps here. I gotta read the steps. Uh, oh, you're solo. I'm just going to check it out today. Okay. Oh, wait. Well, when is Axial Fest? Uh, Axial Fast. When is that? Okay, this piece stays on. Get it right, man. And then this goes underneath that. I gotcha. Okay. Testing the Wraith 1.9. Nice. I'm out of focus? I don't think so. Seems pretty in focus to me. Okay, this goes on the bottom here. Yes. This then goes on top of that, but wait. Okay, no, I can do this part now. Nice uh, stainless uh, piece here. Uh, he does offer it in a black steel as well. But I wanted to go stainless to kind of match the look of the full-size truck. So that's what I'm doing. Okay. Probably done this out of order. That's okay. Oh, I totally did. <laughs> I'm reading them. I'm reading them wrong, okay? Don't worry about it. I'll get I'll figure it out. I'm reading them out of order. Install plastic part. <laughs> I'm reading them poorly. That goes on there these go in here i know i'm a terrible human being i did just pull a josh if matt is out of focus adjust your resolution yes i run a 1080p that's not going in does this have to be upside down? It must have to be upside down. Or am I removing the stock? Hmm. I think it's upside down. Stock screws on the front. What stock screws? This is definitely upside down. Let's 
stock screws on the front. Okay. Yes, I have those. Somewhere. I'm figuring it out as we go. Oh, this has to, this obviously should match up. Yes, there we go. Now it's starting to make more sense to me. Yeah, I can I can hear Artful Dodgers definitely yelling at me. <laughs> no! No! You're doing it wrong. All right. Using M3 by 10. So this is definitely upside down. Who's that little guy on your desk? It's me. Hi Changi. Upside down, it's going great, thank you. How are you doing? I'm having fun, and I'm not... I'm not struggling. I'm just not reading the instructions properly. Which ends up happening to me a lot. Because I look at a, a picture... And I'm like, I know what I'm doing. There. This is going to make it so much easier to key in. I think. Yeah, that'll work. Right, because if I do it this way, those don't, they don't actually cling on to anything. So it has to go this way. Right. Stock kit screws for that hole. Okay, well, I don't have those handy anywhere. I don't know where they went. Oh, the long ones. Okay. These ones? Or did I have it right here? Hi, Masked Master. How are you? I presume that uh, there'll be a lot of people watching the football match later. I seem to have had a bit of a crash there. Sorry about that. Whole computer just decided I'm not working anymore. We've run into a problem. Sorry about that, everybody. Just says, yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not working anymore. It seems really bright, doesn't it? There, that's, that's better. Seem really blown out. Uh, yeah. Every once in a while, it just goes, yeah, I'm not working now. Which is weird. Because it's not like I changed anything. Uh, if it's super fuzzy, it's not me. This thing is as sharp as can be. Football. <laughs> you mentioned football, then it froze. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's get that washer. Back on there, and now we can get to this step. We are close. Does this go behind? Or in front? It looks like it goes behind. Maybe not.
dollar ninety nine asking for a refund if it happens again. Thanks, Josh. I know you've never had any problems with your streams, so you're totally right. <laughs> There we go. Now we've got a nice stainless IFS plate. That looks pretty sick. I like that a lot. Nice little subtle logo right there, laser etched in. Cool. Awesome stuff. Uh, I believe they call it sucker over there. Background processes? I don't think so. There's nothing else running. No explanation. Uh, and then what do I use on the front here, Mr. Artful Dodgers? Maybe I'll just use a couple of short stainless ones so it kind of matches. You used the wrong screws in the front and you have two missing. But I like what they did. I don't want to use a big button head there. So despite me being wrong, uh, I'm just going to go in and use a smaller um, cap screw. That's the screws we... Okay, so don't do what Johnny Don't does. <laughs> I'm just going to use two little tiny, like, three mil ones. These should probably have enough tooth to mount all right good for you <laughs> i bet you i gotta have to just go and ruin things that's my job yeah, we're gonna have to there we go yes There, clean. That looks great. What a nice addition to the front of this truck that is going to be. Thank you very much, Artful Dodgers, for your help on that. Looks awesome. Uh, be sure to check out his eBay page. I think you can just look up Artful Dodgers RC. Uh, I don't know that he has an actual website per se, but um, that looks amazing. The other part that we're going to get on here are his Enduro IFS arm skid plates for a little more fancy fance. I think I can install these now. I'm gonna have to figure out how to do that. These go on the front. I don't remember how these go. first there we go that already looks so cool oh yeah and includes all the mounting hardware they are phillips head so we'll have to get out a phillips head it took a village <laughs> yes it did Those are nice. Just a nice little addition, really kind of classes it out on the front. Um, let me just get this first one installed here. There we go, nice and flush mount. It's nice to have the countersunk uh, mounting holes there. Oh, and he included an extra screw, just in case. Now, Artful Dodgers, you do you also offer a, a skid plate for this section at the back here? Is this something else that you offer as well? M maybe you do, maybe you don't. Phillips head is not the same, Marcus, as JIS, which is what 
uh, Tamiya uses. I have a whole extra set of JIS bits just for the next Tamiya build. FYI. Because there will be a lot of Tamiya builds coming up in the, uh, in the future here. It's so weird, the white balance got all different on me there. I could replace these with countersunk hex, yeah. Um, but I'm just going with what the kit provides. I think that looks amazing. Nice addition there. Yeah, that is that is super cool. It just adds a little more of a like a, a an actual scale kind of look. It looks really, really cool. Both short and long front skids fit the full chassis cover. Okay, cool. Good to know. It's awesome. Looks great. All right. Thank you, Artful Dodgers, for those parts. Very cool stuff. And there's still uh, more to come from them as well. So uh, some gatekeeper-specific stuff coming as well. All right. Let's get to step... Still on gate one of bag three. All right. Have I hit any roadblocks with any of my other builds? Uh, no, not currently. Um, the only roadblock being rain. Uh, yeah, I need to get uh, need to get some more work done on the CUCV, uh, but I need weather that I can go outside and actually do some actual work on it. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, it's all it's all good, no problem there. I gotta adjust the filter on this. So weird, color correction is so bizarre. Uh, my hands are so yellow. Uh. <laughs> it's like no middle ground. That's pretty close. Okay. Well moisturized rain. What's that? Yeah, Southern California. You probably haven't. Oh, you know what I did? Put this in upside down. Idiot. Good thing I only screwed it in on one side, huh? <laughs> I missed another screw back here. Gosh, you can have your dollar back. Man, man, looks okay to me. I'd love to send that rain somewhere else. I was like, why didn't that not go quite right? No, this is going to be impossible to get out of here. Eh. That should give me enough flex to get it out. Come on. Can we talk some 24 hours of Satan on Wednesday? <laughs> yeah, we can definitely talk about that. Um, I've actually done a little bit of work on that that car. Oh man, why did I make this so complicated on myself? Why won't you come? There we go. It has to go with that side up. Build up, stupid. I'll get it, don't worry. Whose hand is it? I 
I think when you screw up a piece like this so badly that you need to basically undo all the chassis rails. Josh gets a refund. I think that's how it works. <laughs> there. Hey, it could have been a lot worse. I, I don't know how, but it could have been. Instructions on the bench. Is that like a reference to somebody else? Does everyone send me money or just you? I don't know what that means. I think everybody sends you money. No? It's nice to know we're all human, though. It's true. <laughs> Mistakes are just happy accidents. Or something like that. You should ask your wife to throw in an extra hand. <laughs> yeah. She's out right now. We're out. We're, we're getting out and about these days. Three by... Twelve? Oh, that's a new bag. That's a new bag of hardware. <laughs> I was like, I don't have any of those in there. Uh, I have ordered one of uh, those Vanquish Products uh, pit mats, and I also ordered their, uh, whatchamacallit, pit uh, box, pit thingy, like tool bits, heart thingies. I'm looking forward to getting that so all my hardware doesn't roll around all over the bench. And I'll probably just use the the pit mat for um like reviews and stuff. Uh self-driving truck. I know people have asked about that. It's still a ways away. Um I have to decide if that's going to go back into the TRX-6 or not, or if I'm going to go move on to something else to, to do that. I don't know yet. Um, like I said earlier, I'm using the Spectrum Firma 2100 KV Censored Brushless Motor Combo. Um, that would be a good choice for this truck. A little bit of oomph when needed. Because it is going to be sort of like that desert rock buggy kind of look. So I kind of want to have it do that at times, especially for video. I'll look at you later. Is that the description on the site if I want to look one up? <laughs> yes. I think that'll slot in nicely right there. Servo tape, eh? I have some of that right here. Is this a good alternative to Hobby Wing? Well, it's essentially, long and the short of it, it's essentially made by Hobby Wing. It's very, very similar. Um, it uses a lot of the same software, uh, but their version of FOC is a little bit different than Fusion, uh, than Hobby Wing, I mean. VP parts tray. <laughs> That's what it's called. I'm not good with words so much. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I like the smart uh, ecosystem. I have a lot of smart batteries and uh, probably one that will even fit in the gatekeeper because it is a smaller battery tray. Uh, it, despite the fact that they include the larger one. Don't know what for. My head is about two and a half inches. That's squares, sir. It's two and a half squares tall. I 
And I think we'll place it here for now. And then we'll figure out if that's the best spot for it. It probably will be. All depends on where we put our receiver. And I bet this can probably fit in there. Anyway, just sort of pretend that's all in a good spot for now and figure it all out later. That's servo. This is the stock servo from um, the element. We'll probably swap that out at some point too. Uh, but this is really more about just the build of the kit for today. All right. Somebody was asking about tires. I'm not using uh, element tires because in the gatekeeper kit, you do not get tires or wheels. Uh, it's just chassis. Uh, I'm going to be using some combination of the Nitto Trail Grappler MT. These are the axial uh, kit tires from the SCX-10 III, but they are the match to the full-size truck. If you look up the fun havers, they are all using Nittos. So um, this is just a, a, a method uh, incision wheel that I have on hand. They're not a perfect match for what the actual trucks use, but um, We'll figure something out. It's all about finding the right kind of things to match, but this is a good starting point. So that's what is being used today. All right, they want you to mount the receiver over here, which may have one. You might as well also put the Velcro straps in at some point. How about now? Mass Master, I just answered that question. Um, AI truck is sort of a work in progress. Uh, I have the new Jetson Nano, uh, but I just, I'm not confident yet what truck I'm going to put it in. If I go back to the TRX-6, do you, like, would people want it in the TRX-6? I'm not sure that that's the right place for it. I'm not sure. I really don't know. I think it'll be a fun project, though. I'm I'm keen to actually get into the programming again. I was having a lot of fun with that when I first started. Um, so yeah, it's still a, a, a ways away. I think if I want to do it properly, which I do, there's a ton of other projects I think are that are going to get precedence over it. Oh, your internet died. Okay, sorry. No problem, though. Nice toit little receiver area there. Might as well use the tube. Holy cow, is this like 1990 receiver tube or res <laughs> antenna tube? Self driving key truck. <laughs> uh, let's see here. How much of this do we actually need? I think we can get away with that much. And then where's the thingy? There it is. Hey, Yorn, you got your stickers. That's great. Glad to hear it, my man. There we go. That tube is scale brake line. It's pretty thick for scale brake line. Okay, we'll worry about wiring and everything later. I'll just plug everything in uh, for now just to kind of keep it out of the way. But guaranteed I'll be doing some uh, wrapping of these things so they do stay out of the way. I think it's always a nice look when you have everything uh, tidied up. I'll use some of that cable wrap that I use. All right. Oh, and then there's one for the fan that doesn't reach. Cool. 
we'll figure that out later. All right, on to the next step. Let's build the transmission, which is bag four. All right. I actually don't remember ever building. No, no, I built a kit, didn't I? No, I don't think I've ever built a transmission kit. Crazy. So this will be kind of fun. Do you ever, uh, Matt, do you ever think about playing with some flying machines? No, I am a terrible pilot. Um, I've, I've tried it a couple of times uh, and I, I enjoy it, but I'm just not good at it. I'm certainly not good at it enough to uh, want to spend any time with it. Uh, in fact, I've got a drone. I've got a nice uh, DJI drone that has only been flown once in the house. Isn't that sad? I've actually, I'm trying to get rid of it. So if anyone's interested in uh, the original, um, what's it called? Like the mini, the mini, it's not an FPV drone. It's just a regular drone. Let me know. It's for sale on the Scale Builders Guild. You can look it up there. Good night. Where's my big tube of grease? That's what she said? I don't know. All right. Outdrive. They want you to grease the screws before putting them in. 53 tooth. 2654. 2852. 53. We really have to grease it? Two and a half by 10. Do it or strip the heads. Okay. Let's get some grease then. I'm just going to use my own grease. Oh, I see. This is going to be a tight fit. Your watch should say 109. 110. Let's see. Turn my torque meter down. Ha! I did it! Success. But yes, I think greasing them is a good idea. Ask how I found that out. Yeah, sometimes it's it's the right thing to do to follow the instructions. <laughs> Another one successfully inserted. Uh, vinyl stickers will stick to Tamiya paint, or do I need an adhesive? No, you should... Uh, like a vinyl sticker, like off your Cricut, that'll stick just fine. Shouldn't need any additional adhesive. Boy, I'm glad I greased these. <laughs> uh, Juan, I used I used my Cricut to uh, cut all the stickers for uh, Shippy's uh, V Dub, and Everything stuck just fine. I used Oracal uh, adhesive vinyl. And yes, you can clear over them. I also did that. All right. Now what? Better grease these again. I'm going to zoom in for... Ooh, 
see the microphone and everything. There we go. Much better. So we put a bearing in there. And then where's the gear shim? Oh, must be on one of these. Nope. In the bag still? Nope. Hmm. Where is shim? X1. Where would that be? Not in there. Crumbs. Wasn't in any of bag four. It's metal. Oh, there it is. It was hiding. Okay, shim. Then 52 tooth. Then bearing. Okay, good. Then we need a bunch of these guys. It's the correct... Grease my screws. Not enough torque. There we go. Hey, uh, Mogui FPV. Just want to thank you for all the amazing content over the years. Scale Builders Guild does some amazing things. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for watching. Much appreciated. Uh, yeah, if you haven't checked out the forum, that is a great place to learn all about the art of building RCs. We've got so many amazing members there, all doing really incredible builds. I'll pick that up in a second. Hi, SFL. Good to see you. Um, yeah, it's a really awesome place to learn and pick up some tips and tricks and uh, just see some really cool builds. I have to find that screw. There it is. But yeah, there's no, sh uh, no shortage of knowledge there. Are we low on likes, Travis? Definitely uh, hit the like button if you uh, are so inclined, or if you're not enjoying this, you don't like witty banter, hit the dislike button. Regardless, they both work. All right. So then these two things go together. Just like that. And it rolls away. Bye. Need a little break here. I uh, yes, Exo Froggy, I am going IFS. Uh, you must have just checked in because uh, the IFS is done. We got IFS on the front there now of the gatekeeper, courtesy of uh, Element, obviously for providing the IFS. And then there's a bunch of Artful Dodgers pieces on there to make it pretty cool. Uh, as you can see, Artful Dodgers is in the chat. Uh, they're preparing now for some upgrades for the IFS suspension and for lifting it up. Testing coming soon. Hello, pardon my noob. Checking in from Smiggins Folly. Was working on my one-to-one -one daily scaler driver, but now have to go. Okay, bye. <laughs> Thanks for checking in, Richard. Good to see you. 26. 27. 28. Need this. Need these. I wish I had that parts tray thingy. Could have all these things in my parts tray. Is this the right shaft? I hope so. 
this goes on there. And then the 27 tooth goes on there. Cool. Then we need parts of the case. This gets a five by 10 bearing. Bearing size is a little bit small. Am I keeping this model? Yes, Robert, I am. No intentions of giving this or doing anything with this other than using it for now. What was that description again? <laughs> You know, the thingy with the thing, the thing on it. Clearly, this has to match up this. It goes smaller on the inside. Mm -hmm. And it does. How long have you been live? I started at noon uh, Eastern time. Okay, let's grease it up. Oh, dog toys in the background. My wife must be home. There we go, nice and greasy. Just the way I like it. Let's get the rest of these bearings on here. This one seems to be attached to the other one. Oh, how did they do that? Twenty past seven in Norway. What grease do I use? Just standard white lithium grease. I got it in bulk. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing crazy, nothing fancy. But it works. Works just fine. And there's your overdrive. Transmission build. That's the six percent overdrive. Jorg Mosberg, thanks for the five euros. Greeting from Ulm, Germany. One of my favorite RC channels. First time watching it live. Right on. My intention was to make this uh, a live stream for my European friends. So thank you very much for checking in and thanks for the five euros. Much appreciated. Uh, King Scott, I tend to kind of move my torque setting around. Uh, the clutch is really super adjustable for uh, heavier plastics. It's usually up in the 11, 13 kind of range. For stuff where I just want to kind of go easy, it's like eight. Yeah, I'm going to go with the less aggressive overdrive. I don't really feel like... Uh, a desert kind of truck needs to have that 12%. 
Once my transmission is together, I always just give it a spin just to make sure it's still spinning freely, which this is. Feels great. Let's get our motor mount plate on here. Like that. Need some 8 mil countersink. Two, three. Overdrove the back so you can slide it around on gravel. Cool. Yeah, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of versatility to the element uh, line, and uh, lots of opportunity for you to modify and change to suit your own kind of needs. Local stores only had the straight unit for you. Check Amazon, Timothy. That's where I got mine. Uh, and having that gyro effect is honestly, it's so great. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't want to do it any other way, if I'm honest. Motor not included. This build wouldn't be complete without some Armageddon. There will be no more Armageddon in my life. I do appreciate that Gunner sent it to me, but um, nope. Cannot do. Cannot, will not. Uh, this is a Spectrum Smart Firma 2100 KV uh, brushless censored motor. Just so you know. Dark Horse Garage, thanks for the 499. This time frame is good for the Midwest, also. Excellent. Yeah, it's sort of like I didn't want to. I didn't want to go too late today anyway. Uh, it's Sunday. It's kind of cloudy, stormy out there today. So this was like the perfect storm. No pun intended. Like a perfect day to do nice little build. Those are way too long for this motor. Oh what they were thinking so we'll have to swap those out for something else will you be yes uh chibs i am using the hard body version i should have mentioned i i'm sure i mentioned that already but if i didn't i'm mentioning it again i'm using the new bright hard body which is gonna be super awesome. It's gonna require a ton of chopping. Uh, if you're on Instagram, check out ShoyX. ShoyXRC. He's also doing one of these. On the Gatekeeper, no less. It's like we both kind of had the same idea at the same time, and I'm sure I'm not alone in that. Uh, the Fun Haver is a pretty cool looking chassis. And the gatekeeper makes it pretty easy to actually do this. Which is great. Did Bryson claim the 50k giveaway? No, he didn't. Good good memory there, SFL. Bryson D, if you are out there, if you are watching right now, you won the TRX4 50k giveaway. So you got to contact me. I've sent you four emails. If I don't hear from you soon, I think I actually, I gave you 24 hours on the last email. So that's coming up, dude. You have got to reach out. No joking around. This is no joke. Serious business. What camera would you put on a crawler? Ah, uh, for what? purpose like to fpv or or what yeah timothy uh it's the same kind of connector that you would find on the hobby wing because hobby wing makes this for spectrum Pretty basic slipper clutch there, as in not really. 
I've given it, I know I've given him more, more than enough time. It's been like a week and a few days. So he does honestly, I think he's going to miss out here. I think that, um, that's it for him. 18 tooth opinion, eh? What have I got in my box opinions? Probably all 32 pitch. I don't do a lot of, what's this? What is this? Maybe this is one. 20. That's going to be a bit aggressive. I'm definitely not putting on the 20. Oh, what do we got here? There's an 18. All right. Good find. And you guys all know how to set opinion, right? Pretty, pretty, pretty easy. I don't think Bryson works in education, and I say that only because he's like, based on his age, I think he's in his early 20s. And by early 20s, I mean not old enough to already have a job like that. I could be wrong, making an assumption, of course, but. It's clear that he's not paying attention to any emails because I've sent it four times. So yeah, we will definitely be doing another draw, probably even tonight. 20 is good? No, Josh. 20 is not good. Uh, you guys all know the trick for setting your, your mesh, right? Put a piece of paper in there, then smush it down as tightly as you can get it. Tighten your screws. And for all intents and purposes, you should have a perfect gear mesh. You run 22, it needs it. Okay, well that's two people. Two people telling me something. I will go with the 20. Now, where did that go? There it is. Now I have to set my gear mesh again. Am I going to do a build thread on this? Yes, probably, because there's going to be a lot of body mods happening, and uh, I do want to kind of document that process. So I will definitely do a build thread. But it'll start with a completed gatekeeper and a link to a video. Cardstock okay? No, just use regular everyday uh, line, you know, like paper, like a notebook or whatever. How wide is this kit? How wide is, like, in terms of its width from, like, cage to cage? I don't have the specs in front of me, and I'm not at that point, so I can't answer that effectively for you. I'm sorry. I tighten the motor plates down and leave the set screw out of the pinion and spin and adjust from there. Yeah, uh, but the paper is perfect every single time. All right, moving on. Now that we've got the transmission built, let's get the cover on there. Thanks for your help, guys, on the on the pinion size. Much appreciated. And what do we need there? Three by five. Two little guys. I think I'll spin these by hand. David Urban, I check my email every day. I don't know how you, like in this day and age, how could you not check your email every day? It's on every single device. Okay, transmission going in. We're going in.
pretty heavy towards the the motor side. Right? Short and then tall. Should you seal this case? Seal it with what? There's already grease in there. The gears aren't steel. Uh, I don't think you're in any danger of like, even if it gets wet, I mean, that happens. I don't think it's need to, I don't think you need to seal it with anything specifically. From water, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother doing that. It'll have a pretty tight seal on it. You'd have to like submerge it for a long time. If you really wanted to, you could do what Timothy suggests, but I don't really think it's necessary. If I'm honest, you know, while I'm down here, I'm just gonna put the skid plate in place. Keep it greased and well-maintained. Yep, that's basically it. I appreciate the question, Gussie. Yeah, it's but it's not necessary. We're way beyond that in terms of uh, like it's not. Not something I would worry about. You're running the trans backwards. Oops. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Yeah, I'm under driving the front. No, I'll fix that. Sometimes you look at a, a graphic and uh, it's all uh, it's all backwards. <laughs> RC Mod Adventure, thanks for the kind words. I like my channel too. Do I conformal coat any electronics? No, um, because this system is waterproof from the factory, uh, from what I recall. So I don't find that totally necessary. I have, I've never actually conformal coated anything because I don't I don't run my stuff under water. Another dollar ninety nine for Josh. Yeah. Why is my dog lying down? Oh, it's raining. Look at this. You can't see that. Look at that ding dong. Lying down in the rain with his raincoat on. Poor little ding dong. I love him, but he is not the bravest dog in the world. Perry G, okay, I'm here. You can start now. Oh, Perry, you've missed a lot. You've missed a lot. Yeah, you could use dielectric grease, sure. Marine grease. Again, you have to, like, if you're really doing that underwater stuff, like, I mean, things are going to get wrecked anyway. Give it enough time. Crawling Finn, thanks for the six pound, six euro ninety. Today on Big Hands Make Tiny Mistakes. <laughs> thanks very much, man. Much appreciated. There, that seems to make more sense. And the motor wires will fit. Perfection. They do a nice job of uh, of this this kit, the motor and ESC combo. It all just goes together so nicely. Snippity snap! There we go. Look at that. Nice stuff. You should mount front drive shaft on trans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I don't know where the rest of that is though. So we'll do that later. Front axle. We can skip all of that. 
because we're not putting a front axle on. Front axle, rear axle. All right, bag six. Oh, gatekeeper kit does include a metal servo horn, in case you were wondering. Is it magnetic? Yes, it is. So that's steel, not aluminum. Noise. Eight. Five. Seven. There's six. Here comes six. Bradley, no, I got rid of that blazer. Uh, but I'm building another one. I'm building a CUCV now, which is a um, uh, military Chevy. Uh, my friend Richard, pardon my noob, who was just in here, he has a real one. Great plastic on the axles, too, I might add. He has a real one in his driveway. So he's he's also building one in, in miniature scale to match his. Carolina Ghost, thanks for the two bucks. So you adding a craft foam or bomber interior. <laughs> I'm going to actually use the included gatekeeper interior, which should, I think, probably fit this pretty well. At least I'm hoping. We'll, we'll see as we get kind of further into the build, but uh, there will be no foam interior. This will have a real interior made by a real man. <laughs> Oh, gosh. I can't believe that Josh got away with that terrible interior. That wouldn't fly anywhere that I, uh, that I go. That's for sure. That was embarrassing. Joining late were the electronics included in the kit. No, Justin. Uh, there are very few kits that include electronics. Uh, this is definitely not one of them. They're tiny bearings. We need an Enduro Element 20, uh, an Element Enduro 24 gatekeeper. Who is Josh exactly? You think Josh felt shame, Moose Jaw? You really do? The uh, man, you know, man. That build. Sorry, that build. I hope he's still watching because I. I honestly, I found that very difficult to watch that whole thing go down. And then to see the results afterwards. Got to squeeze some grease here. Some more grease in the tube. There we go. Who is the key master? If Dozer is the gatekeeper, is Dozer the gatekeeper? I can never remember. Oh, don't put that in upside down. That would be bad. Fiddle DD, that will require a new pinion gear. Hmm, that's a tight, tight fit. There we go. Points is points, get them any way you can. I guess so. It's not really how I operate, but it's okay. That's how Josh does it. I, I can't believe he showed it to us either. Yeah, that's more that's more to the point. I can't believe he showed it. I don't think it was out of pride that he showed it, though. Not saying it would have stopped him, but knew the retribution he would receive. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing. I don't think he showed it out of pride. I think he showed it out of sheer embarrassment. Hi, Mike. Welcome. Thanks for watching. It wasn't an interior. It was a skate ramp. <laughs> Toit like a toyga. 
it is the Sorka NASCAR way. And somebody asked me in the stories the other day if I felt like Sorka needed to make any changes. And I kind of feel like they do. You know, the spirit of Sorka is in the first name or the first letter in the um, the actual like um, thing, right? Sorka stands for scale off-road Ars Radio Control Association. I um, don't worry about it. <laughs> Something like that. But it's like you guys gotta like do something to get it more scale accurate again. That was the whole point of that. Gary Jerry Hasselton, thanks for the 999 and the dancing peach. Much appreciated. Hope you guys are enjoying this stream. I'm having a grand old time putting this truck together. There we go. What do people think of the element axles? Um, I'm not a giant fan of the look, if I'm honest. They're okay. But I prefer a more rounded pumpkin. It's round on the bottom, but just the square sort of... I think that maybe on the design side they could do a little bit more. That's all I'm saying. Then we get some bearing retainer screws here. These are very important so you don't lose your bearings. Not those bearings. Comp should be like golf. Instead of people hitting, instead people hit gates and don't call it, then sign a sheet confirming the score. Well, I mean, that's up to the judges, right? And, you know, people are going to, there's going to be people who are always going to be honest, and there's people who are always going to be not honest about stuff like that. And, you know, it really helps when someone like Josh is at a comp so he can film everything. And then if there's ever a discrepancy, check the tape. It should almost be a requirement, actually, that everything be filmed and scored later. You know, like maybe that's something they could change. So they take out, they take out a bit of the human element. Nine four nine designs. Thanks for the four ninety nine. Good morning, Matt from SoCal. What model Dewalt is that, please? This is the DCF six eighty cordless screwdriver. Uh, I filled in the warranty card when I received it. It's got the gyro tech. Uh, I'm using Traxxas tips right now. Um, but anything that accepts that sort of that standard 5 mil style hex with the lip will work. Uh, let's get the lower link mounts on here. Goes that way. Element axles lack any scale looks. Uh, yeah, and that is that is sort of a problem, for sure. I wouldn't mind seeing a new axle design from them. You know, Growing Pains, right? They were a new company, like, two years ago. 2019, March 2019. May? Maybe it was May. No, March. Proline by the Fire. It was the first time I ever saw an element kit. Actually, that's not true. I had mine before I left. Get a little more torque on that top one there. Carolina Ghost, thanks for the five bucks. Just ran a local comp yesterday and placed third in both class one and two. Class one was a G made Buffalo, class two, SCX 10 2 Gladiator. Wow. Great job. Nicely done. Why well, hear my puppers? He came down here, but he's not coming in here. I 
Thank you very much for the warranty card information. <laughs> uh, the F9 portals are good looking. Uh, I think I think still the Vanquish um, axles are my favorite axles of all time. You know, mostly because they are amazing and aluminum. Always handy to have aluminum. Oh, I think he's coming in here. I see a dog. Hi. How you doing? Oh, you're a bit moist. He was not a good boy, I guess. Are you coming up here? Say hi. Come up here. Jump on up. No, not over that way. Here, this way. Come on up here. Yeah. You're a good boy. What a happy dog. You're a good dog. He doesn't come to see me the whole time. And then my wife gets home. And he's like, I want to see the dad. Good boy. All right. Are you out of here or are you staying? I guess you're staying. Okay. Fine. Stay then. <laughs> Are you s <laughs> get your get your face out of there? Am I supposed to clip off these things? I guess I am. It's weird they would leave those on. Yeah, I smell a wet dog too. Okay, how do you go? Say bye. See you later. He's a good dog. Oh, what scale is that dog? He's full scale. Uh, Jeremy, I don't know why they left these on here. It seems weird, doesn't it? That they left these little like triangle bits on there. I, mm, I know you are supposed to clip them off, but. Ding. Yeah, there we go. Good, good. All right, that is the axle done. It's nice and smooth. I know they're mold tabs. It's just weird that they that stays on there. Oh, great! Now we're on the worst part of this build. Can we just skip the links? Is that something we could do? Probably not. Probably not an option. At least I only have to do the rear ones. Actually, uh, in this, I don't need the steering link. I don't need the pan hard. I don't need the lowers. I don't need the uppers. Oh, I do need the rear uppers. Okay. That's fine. But at least this part. Cooking show, man. I know, Wes. I should have done that first, right? And here's the links fully built. At least we're doing a trailing arm rear. So there's only like four links. Oh, and a sway bar. Right. Forgot about that. Flex seal and you don't need links. Flex seal, you don't need anything. Ah. I'm taking a little break. I've earned it. Let's go through the chat. Axle cover now, maybe. Yes. That's a good call. Thank you. Ooh, fancy. I like that. Talk about the thumbnail Bronco body, please. Uh, well, it looks nothing like that right now. Uh, it's just the new bright body, which doesn't want to be in the camp. So here you go. 
see the microphone for a moment and my coffee mug what a mess this bench is anyway this is a new bright two-door bronco body um hard body which will get heavily modified to make it look like the body on the fun haver There'll be lots of steps before we get to that all right but that's going to look pretty sweet right i'm going to have to section it um it's been a lot of chopping john howard uh oven cleaner works really really well at removing chrome from plastic it's what i use when i remove chrome carolina ghost uh we did talk a little bit about the giveaway truck bryson still hasn't claimed it I think this is going to be his last day to do so. And then we're moving on to somebody new. It's time. Unfortunately. For Bryson, anyway. Fortunately for everybody else. Yes, Arturo, I will be doing a build thread on the Scale Builders Guild forum uh, so you can follow along with all the modifying to the body because there will be a lot. How much for you to make me one too? <laughs> uh, I'm not... Uh... I'm not currently in the business of making uh, trucks for other people, but you never know, this might come up for sale someday. I feel like that four TRX4 is cursed. Oh, and that's nice. That'll help slippy slide as it's going fast. It's a good piece. I like that. Nice integration into the uh, the pinion side too. Looks good. All right, links. Ding. All right, what are we building here? Top links. These are the 102 millimeter ones. I don't think that's to scale, but luckily, in every Enduro manual, on the inside page here, the front, shows you all the link lengths in the right scale so that's the 73 one is that what we're looking at here 73 mil perfect and i think this is it for links that i have to build isn't that amazing i approve uh Tuki to rock. I like the element builds. Uh, I've been a fan of them since the beginning. They are a little more basic, uh, but it's sort of like I kind of equate it to the SCX 10 2. There's tons of upgrade parts. They all kind of work together because they are very similar to each other in terms of sort of the mechanics of them. Um, and uh, I like this sort of the, the more basic approach. It gives you a lot more room to modify and do your own thing. You don't have one of these Serba tools. I definitely recommend getting one. They are amazing. Great way to assemble links. Uh, tiny overlanding. Uh, I've done a ton of videos on the SCX-10 III. Um, I suggest you take a look at those. Uh, I don't remember exactly what I put in mine. I think it's got a castle system. But there are tons of good uh, motor and ESC combos. 
these parts have the feel of associated uh, plastics. Well, that's good. They should um, because they are the same company. Associated is element. Uh, Robert, this tool is the Serba tool. And if you Google that name, S Z C Z E R B A, you will find the place where you can put one of those up. It's just that simple. And one link done. But this makes assembling links so much easier. Can you pick up a Satan motor by itself anywhere? That's a good question, Wes. I don't I don't think so. I think they're only available from Camtech. They're like his own brand. You want a Serba tool from an SBG giveaway? You did? That's cool. How long ago was that, Andrew? I can't even remember. That's crazy. That's awesome. I love it. Okay, there's my two rear uppers. And we can get some uh, ball ends. Metal pillow balls here. Which is different from what they're offering in the uh, Builder's Kit 2 on the Element Enduro. They're giving you uh, Delrin ones. Camtech sells them separately. Thank you, Andy. And a bargain at £9.99. Pounds. <laughs> I, maybe it isn't a bargain. I don't know. <laughs> Josh showed how to repurpose a dog bone output to be a nice rod end tool. Cool. But I would always recommend the Serba tool. You can get one. Get one. All right. Noise. Now, where do these go? Oh, yeah, they go on the top. What? Oh, we need a spacer. Where are my five mil spacers? There you are. You pronounce it kind of funny since we're from Poland. How would you pronounce it there, Artful Dodgers? It's not Serba. That bag of hardware go. It's probably tough for you to sp spell it out phonetically. Sherba. Yes. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. I should have known. Ah, here it is. Seems like a long bolt. And then a nut. Gray Matter Fab, thanks for the $5. So glad you're doing a live build on Sunday so I can get my RC fixed while I wait on parts to come in for my build. Love the channel and your run vids. Thank you very much. That is very kind of you. Oh, wait. I 
I was using the wrong bolts for a moment there. Sherba tool. That makes so much more sense. I watched a guy pop a pivot ball in and out with his teeth mid comp. Oh my gosh. Ouch. I couldn't do that. Nor would I want to. <laughs> that sounds painful. Jeff Judd, thanks, man. You're the reason I've gotten back into the hobby. Right on. Well, I'm sorry in a way, because this hobby is not cheap. But it is so fun. I love it so much. I I still think the building is the best part. I mean, I love all of it. I love driving. But I really, I haven't had a great opportunity to do a lot of driving lately. Because, you know, all the stuff going on. Um, yeah, shoot. I'm like, I'm really getting some serious FOMO about not being able to be at Axial Fest this year. It's two in a row that I've missed. Actually, is it three? I don't think I went in 2019. I think I did other things. That's right, I didn't go in 2019 either. It's three in a row I'm missing, and that... I went to four in a row, and then I missed three in a row. That kind of... that kind of stinks. But I'll be back next year. That's a virtual guarantee. So I haven't really run. It's it's this has been pretty good so far. I haven't really run into anything uh, issues wise or part wise or missing anything. It's been pretty good. Uh, Great Matter Fab, I'm going to have to check out your channel. I'm sure I've seen something from it. I, I apologize if I, it's like a hard time keeping names and channels straight and everything. So I definitely will check that out. But thank you for the kind words. Uh, I'm going to do, I, I don't know, you know, I should actually, I should talk to Shoyx and see what he's doing with his chibs. Um, but it'll either be Lauren Healy or Von Gittin. One of the two. There's another one out there, isn't there? There might be. 28. Let's get that axle on there now. You don't have a channel? Huh. Okay. So maybe it wasn't you. <laughs> Uh, I will say I do like this format of like building live um, with the overhead view. I think the overhead view is better than uh, the side view. It gives you a little bit like a more bird's eye view look at, at how everything is going together. I think anyway, you tell me. The axle in the hole. Come on. There we go. Overhead with the tiny guy in the corner. See how quick Josh was to adopt the uh, the floating man? Because he knows a good thing when he sees it. Am I worried about motor clearance? I don't think so. It's not much bigger than any standard 540. We haven't gotten to that part yet, though. So we'll see. Uh, SC Spider-Man. Yes, I did do a full SCX-10-3 build series where I go over every step. Uh, and you're more than welcome to check all of that out. Okay, let's build a sway bar. 
I think is a good idea. Need the two drop link parts. You've been very vocal about your... F yes, I know, Wes. Wes would prefer if uh, my ugly face wasn't involved in any portion of the construction whatsoever. <laughs> Which is, um, you know, something we could definitely consider. Just a quiet video with nothing happening. <laughs> eh. It's old son I see in here. And you chose well, you'll meet some wonderful folks in this hobby. Hi, old son. And Morgan Freeman doing the voiceover, right? <laughs> Christmas, you should 3D print a clothes hanger for Josh to hang a t-shirt on. I could send him a little miniature t-shirt. Scale Builders Guild miniature t-shirt. One millimeter shim. Did Matt say he was going to be doing a fun haver chassis? Uh, Shane, I'm taking the gatekeeper and making it the fun haver. Sorry if there was any confusion. <laughs> Thanks, Spider-Man. Wasn't directed at you, but it certainly contained your username. <laughs> All right. What next? Now, see, they did the whole um, sway bar in the black plastic, which I think makes more sense because you do want a little more flexibility in those parts, which is good. Valley of the Sun Picker. It's because of you that I found such amazing hobbies. I've been having a blast. Purchased an Axial Gladiator and an SCX-24 for my six-year-old daughter. Right on. It's always great when you can share this hobby with people. Whether it be family or friends or enemies. Whatever it is. It's really great when you can share it. And I think that alone makes it that much more enjoyable. If you can have fun with somebody... I think that's the best part of this hobby. 22 mil, eh? See, now I need... This. That's too long. That's too short. No, no, that's 22. There's this a 22. That's a 22. Hi, Toby. F-Toy on a TF2 chassis, right on. Uh, F-Toys are awesome. I made one for a friend. Well, I made one, and then I gave it to a guy. Uh, pardon my noob did a really nice one, too. His is awesome. I like a good F-Toy. You don't see a lot of those being made nowadays. I still think it's ripe for somebody making one as a kit. Oh yeah, I saw Wes snap his TRX-4 axle. Right where you would expect it to break, too. Okay.
Moving on. Do I have a Castle ESC? Yes, I do. I've got Mamba Max or Mamba X in a few trucks, and I've got a Mamba Micro X in the Forerunner. So yes, I've used a lot of Castle stuff. I use Tekken, I use Homes, I use Spectrum. I kind of mix it up between all of those manufacturers. Because it's nice to try other things. I've got Hobby Wing, I've got it all. I think when you stick to one brand, you miss out on a lot of um, good opportunities to kind of get uh, you know some experience with other stuff. I think that's a really important part of this hobby is to have a little bit of knowledge from all over the place. Do they make drive shafts for the element that don't use plastic? I mean, it's a pretty standard length, either a 12.3 or a 12.8 inch wheelbase. So you could use, I presume you could use a, a, a few different options from a few different places. I don't think you're, you're locked into that. You could use incision drive shafts probably. Um, you know, whatever works. Holmes does make killer motors. No doubt about that. I've got a lot of, uh, Holmes stuff. Uh, I used an older, BRXL um, and a brushless setup for my bummer when I was running ultra races. The thing just keeps on smashing through gates. It was amazing. Then we need to add these. Fourteens. That wasn't Wes's TRX4, it was another guy's. Oh, okay. Cool. With Capra axles. Hmm. It was it was like the perfect uh the perfect hit. When I saw it, I was like, yep, that's gonna snap something for sure. It's just like it got enough torque. Oops, I put these on backwards. That's okay. That should not affect things. Um, enough torque on just the right edge of that uh, tree stump, and that was it. Brutal. It happens. Inevitably, things are going to break. There's no way around it. Oh, I'm getting a bit stiff. <laughs> All right. So that looks ready to go. Let's see how this goes on here. Oh, I see. That's neat. My rear bumper mount. That's not it. The rear bumper mount. Fishing all the way back to box or bag two. Honest opinion on the SCX 10 3. Uh, I think it's a great truck. I like all the innovation they put into it. Um, I'm a big fan of axials, so. I mean, they've already got my my vote there, uh, but there's a lot of really cool stuff going on in that truck, and uh, I definitely think it deserves a look. I think there's still a lot of potential too. It's such a new platform; like it's only a year old, 
Um, and I think there's a lot of room for development and people doing things for it. Um, I much prefer the straight axle to the, to the, uh, the portal. That's just my scale side of me talking. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a great truck. I wouldn't have done the review on it and been so happy about it if I didn't like it. It's definitely my go-to. Does this go on the inside or the outside? Looks like it goes on the outside. All right. Let's put this in. Slide this over that. Cool. 12 mil again. Uh, for the record, I give my honest opinion on every review I do. Um, so, yeah, you you pretty much always will get that from me. Just so you know. Uh, Andrew, I don't know the dimensions <laughs> or the, like, the maximum dimensions for the uh, tactical hip bag. But um, I'm sure you could get like an extension if that were an issue. You need to make a whole video dedicated to reviewing custom interior by Harley Designs. I think it would be hilarious if he offered that as a product on his website. Need an interior? Have I got the product for you? What straight axles would you recommend for the SCX 10 3 for a swap? The axial ones. They were designed to go with it so that's what i would recommend okay sway bar installed now on to the trailing arms now i've seen some interesting looking products sor uh sor racing has been developing their own uh, trailing arm for the gatekeeper i believe they're, um, I think they're, I think they're metal. Gatekeeper or Wraith 1.9. Hmm. Gatekeeper or Wraith 1.9. Um, I think I prefer the wheelbase of the Gatekeeper. I don't have a Wraith 1.9. I've been talking about getting one. I just haven't done it yet. Um. So, I, I mean, I, I can't really comment accurately because I don't have the 1.9 Wraith. Uh, but maybe I'll leave it to people in the comment or in the, uh, the, the comment section there. You can chat it out amongst yourselves. Tell me what you think. I think they're vastly different trucks. Uh, one still has a steel frame, and the other one doesn't. The Wraith 1.9 is all plastic, so there's that to kind of keep in mind. Might be something that changes your mind. Okay. 20 mil, 20 mil. Wait, some of these have to be 18s. Oh, good. They're perfect. 22s. Perfect. How tight do you do be locked? David, you'll have to ask that again. Which is more capable between the Capra or the Gatekeeper? Uh, the Capra will be a much more capable crawler. 
in my opinion. It was meant to be sort of like a comp crawler-esque kind of design. You need to have much more uh, luck with that one over this. Uh, and I'm also honestly setting this one up to be not a crawler, more of a desert style. Um, style truck. 20. Sorry, I'm concentrating. What would be cool would be kits with no axles or tires so I can choose whatever I want and save a little on the kit cost. I, yeah, yeah. You're not, you're not wrong. That would definitely be interesting. I don't, like most, um, most companies nowadays have some sort of raw kit. Like, I mean, you're still going to get the axles though. I think we're still a ways away from anything else other than that. Why do they call me? Oh, they want this to go. What? Sorry. One moment, please. Rear 22. It was on the outside of this, I guess. Hmm. All right. Let's try that then. Yeah, I guess that's right. Hello, Moose Jaw. Were you gone and then back again? The all okay. Somebody what I was asking earlier about the SCX-10 III, my only gripe is that the dig isn't perfect. It doesn't mesh perfectly every time. So that would be my one complaint. But if that's all there is, that's not so bad. Ran my trailing arms in the double shear mount. Yeah, it's not obvious in that not obvious in that picture, but I bet you you're right. Although that does seem to move pretty well with it on the outside. We'll have to double check that. We'll try it both ways. So Moose Jaw, I'm not the only one. Okay, good. Because that is weird, right? It's a weird way to do it. Everything else seems pretty nicely engineered, and then you get to that step, and you're like, huh? What? What are they doing there? Could rift axles work on a wraith spawn? Um, you'll have to try it and see. I don't know. I don't think any a wraith spun. Um, I mean, they're they're a little bit wider. So if that's an issue for you, I 
I hope to have your hair when I get to your age, Matt. <laughs> I'm only 43. Yeah, that all seems correct. Nice to have a sway bar in there. That's good. Cool. Okay. Let's do some drive shafts. Still, we haven't gotten to the worst part yet. The shanks. What bag? Eight. All right. We're trucking along pretty good here. 2.30. I think we'll we'll go for another half hour. And then we'll call it wherever we end up. That'll be where we'll, we'll finish for today. And I'll come back again in another video with the remaining bits and pieces. Uh, I think we're building the rear drive shaft first. This doesn't really matter. Drive shafts is about third on my list of least favorite things. But they have to be done. Does Canada have an A and AARP for you to look into? I presume that's some sort of retirement plan. I'm not that old. Uh, I feel that old sometimes. I think I only need to build the rear. Because I've got a front sitting around here somewhere. Somewhere. Oh, visionary! Thanks for watching. Uh, the intention was to kind of do a, a more uh, European um, time zone friendly. Greg, I could not agree. Free senior coffee at McDonald's. Oh my God, I deserve it. At least, you know, drive shafts now are, are pretty much a standard sort of fare across the board. You can pretty much assemble them without looking. They're all very similar. Build a front and rear drive shaft, it says. Okay. I will. AARP is a weird club in America that starts inviting you 20 years before you get to joining age. Oh, thread lock. Don't forget the thread lock, which is not included. That would be it. Right now it's stuck in there forever. Thread lock, baby. We're gonna use we're gonna use Tammy a thread lock today. Because I have it handy. And it's red. Builders kit two, nice upgrades and will cost me some money again. Yeah, there are some nice upgrades in there. Zoom, you get one of the other sides. Oh. These live streams are hard on my body. Because you have to maintain position on camera so people see what you're doing.
hurts after a while. Andy J, I am also interested in seeing what the modified Bronco looks like. Like I said earlier on, it's going to require a lot of like tinkering and thinking. So it's not like something you can do really easily on a live stream. Make sure they are in phase. Mm -hmm. Okay. They want long end on the transmission side, which is good because that's how I did it. Don't lose that pin. Yikes, that doesn't seem long enough. Guess it is. I, I presume it would never go beyond that length, but it does seem kind of short. We shall see. I am intrigued to see the body done as well, Joe. Oh, you actually got to see these trucks testing, eh? That's pretty cool. I'd like to go see one of these races in the real life someday. I think that would be super fun. Oh, I lost the pin. How did that happen already? Seems like something I would do. You had a problem where the aluminum piece was too long. I'm having the exact opposite problem, I think. Though maybe not, we'll see. Just seems like if you got to full extension, it yeah, that would be exactly what would happen. Seems odd to me. We'll probably end up checking that out later, making sure that I didn't screw that up somehow. But, yeah, it just seems like it's too short. And there's no more pieces, so... Weird. I will not worry about the front for now. We've got that half done. Move on. Wrong insert. Wrong insert. There's only there's only the Oh, here it is. Thanks. <laughs> Listen, guys. Building a build live, you're gonna have to just deal with me making mistakes. And now I won't be able to get this on because I'm on all the way. 
<laughs> Thanks for all the help, gentlemen. Huzzah! That's fixed it. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. Are you still watching? That was part of the test. <laughs> There, much better. Okay, moving on to the worst part of the build. Actually, you know what? Should we skip the shocks and just move on to the cage so you can see the cage complete? What do you think? Cage? Or do we wait? Yeah, I know, Josh is raking it in. He's getting all my money back. All right, let's build one shock at least. Shack building. They are the nice shots, so you can at least see those go together. Shocks are trash. Build the shocks. They are the bronze shocks. Factory team style. Now, I can't remember, but... Do you get the a firmer shock up front? Yes. <laughs> Wes, you're doing a good job, Matt. You're new to this, though, so... You know... Takes some getting used to. Mm. I know. Slow Don, thanks for the four ninety nine. That's why we enjoy live builds. Enjoy finishing up the kit. Thanks for all the content. Thank you for the slow the four ninety nine slow Don. Much appreciated. Uh, these are very nice looking shocks. They look a lot more trick than what you get with any of the other ones. They are better too. I definitely recommend picking up green slime if you don't have green slime already. Very useful in building any sort of shock from any company, doesn't matter who. Don't lose the eclipse, whatever you do. Alright. Maybe a session or two at Josh's school of building. But then I'd have grease everywhere, and I would also have um shock oil on my pants. Like I said, let's just build one. We'll do one and get through it. Because I don't think we're going to get the whole thing built in three hours. It's going to take a little bit longer than that. See, if I had done my due diligence and did what I, I was supposed to, then the shocks would already have been built. Links would have already been built. I screwed it up, guys. Cody Oscar David, thanks for the 499. Picked up an RC four wheel drive. Terrain. Have you come across one ever? Terrain. No, I don't even know what that is. Harder build than a rift, huh? Well, more involved than a, than a rift was. Maybe. I don't know what the RC four wheel drive terrain is. Um, what do we do here first? Oh, these come with. I guess these go on... Where do these go? Hmm. Not yet. Let me get my green slime. And what weight oil are we going to put in here? Let's put in 50. 50 sounds good. All right.
yeah, I think we'll build a shock and then that might be it. I want to give everybody time to watch their soccer match if that's what they're going to be doing. There I am. Sorry about that. I think the camera's getting to the end of its, uh, I think it's getting a little warm in there. So I think it's deciding that this stream might be over sooner than we thought. Uh, so if that happens again, that'll be it. So hopefully that doesn't happen again, but it might. Um, I know video would prefer it if I just stayed off camera. <laughs> yeah, no Mike J when we need him. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, I imagine this is probably, it's like reached its thermal cutoff point. So we may not get much more out of this. So. We'll get this shock built, and then I think we'll call it a day. But I appreciate you all hanging out, watching, spending the last three hours with me. Uh, it's been fun to do some building together. The uh, shock shaft in here. There we go. There's going to be a little bit of extra slime that comes out. Hard O-ring over soft O-ring. There's a bunch of O-rings in there. It goes washer, O-ring, spacer, O-ring. And then you put another O-ring over the top of this part of the shock. There we go. That goes in, get a rod end, which is probably the shorter one. And another great tool to have is a pair of shock pliers. So you can hold, these are actually factory team shock pliers, in case you care. Uh, and this is just really handy to hold down the shaft without scratching it. There we go. Very handy tool. Now I have to move all this stuff off the page and continue on to the next page. Uh, will these fit on a VS410? I don't 
No, I don't see why they wouldn't. I think they're the same length, 90 millimeter shock. Time to add some fluid. Should really leave the O rings uncompressed before you insert the shaft. Um, that's not that's not what they show in the manual, but that's a good tip. Thank you. Um, I'm doing 50 mil or 50 weight oil, so I like my shocks to be a little more firm. And we're going to bleed out properly by getting the bubbles out of the bottom. Today was like a mixed bag of nuts. <laughs> That's fair. And we'll let those bubbles kind of bleed out there. Add some more fluid. Compress down the shock piston and add a shock cap which I should have taken off of the thing beforehand because I don't have a shock holding thingy. So I have to be creative here for a moment. I don't want to spill shock oil. Okay, I might even put another little drop in there just to get it up to the level. And put our cap on. Tighten that down all the way. Nice tight fit. And there we go. A perfectly bled shock. We put this on. Add, which ones do they say? Rear are the blue ones, which are the more firm ones. We'll do that. A shock holding thingy from Harley Designs. Who would have thunk it? I'll have to check that out. And then put my own logo on it. That's how you do it, right? And there we go. Shock built. Good looking shocks. Oh, one final thing to do. Eh, maybe I'll use my shock pliers here. Not the proper use for these, but sometimes it's a great way to get one of those on there. There's no ring for inside the collar. I already put it on. Oh, there is. What? Oh, darn it. Read all the steps. Thank you, Carlos. See, I. you know what? I don't even need... I don't even need to do a live stream. You guys know what to do. All right. Seems odd me why do you even need that is it just so it holds it in place very strange must be the wrong size i guess that makes sense Great. Perfection. Cool. All right. 
there we go shock built all right guys so i think we're gonna end it there because it's been three hours um and let's uh let's come back to this definitely um i think that um we got a fair bit accomplished today which is good um lots of pieces from artful dodgers were included front skid plate uh and then the uh the a-arm plates as well which look amazing uh, artful dodgers is on ebay you can check out all of his stuff there he's got a lot of stuff for the element uh, line of uh, cars and trucks this is the gatekeeper so it's got trailing arm rear suspension i added ifs to this kit and uh, i'm running spectrum electronics uh, this is their 2100 kv brushless censored motor and uh, it's going to be a fun fun haver build once it's all complete uh, thank you everybody for watching and checking in today have the great rest of your Sunday. If you're watching the soccer match, enjoy that. Um, I've lost all the super chats, so I can't remember everybody who gave a donation. But Cody Oscar David was in there. Slow Don. Um, that's all I've got on this list because there were a couple of crashes in there. So I apologize. But thank you, everybody, for watching. It's been a total blast. hope you enjoyed uh, this gatekeeper build. There's going to be a lot more to come on this, uh, so be sure to check the forum. I think it's going to be a really good one. Nice effort from Wes. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, thanks, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Uh, we'll see you all Tuesday. Actually, you know what? Tuesday, we can come right back to this. So um, we'll be working more on the Gatekeeper on Tuesday night. See everybody. Thanks for checking in. Have a great rest of the day. Love you. Bye.